Hi, we're John and Karen Sweeney. We'd like to thank you for buying this DVD. We'd also like to thank the countless great teachers and champions that we've learnt so much from over the years. This DVD is our way of passing on to you all the hints and tips that we've learnt, together with our own analysis of what makes Modern Jive work. In many ways, Modern Jive is a simple dance style, as is shown by how many hundreds of thousands of people are dancing it around the world today. But in order to get people dancing as quickly as possible, the average Modern Jive club tends to focus almost entirely on moves and very little on technique. Modern Jive has evolved in different ways across different countries and between the many different clubs that teach it. It's unlikely that you'll have come across all the techniques on this DVD and in some cases you may have been taught something different. It's important to remember that there is no governing body for Modern Jive. There are no rules. I will explain the reasons for many of the things I'm teaching. Please evaluate what you find here and decide for yourself what works and what doesn't work for you. Modern Jive has evolved to be a synthesis of many dance styles. It is incredibly varied, so I'm sure you'll find some exceptions to what I'm teaching. The key principles to keep in mind are that both partners should be able to enjoy the dancing without getting hurt, that the man should give a clear lead, and that the lady should follow effortlessly, so that it should be a pleasant experience for everyone. This DVD starts with some absolute basics. Any good coach takes his students back to basics at least once a year to rebuild technique and muscle memory so that their performance can be built on a solid basis and improve to even greater heights. These basic techniques are the foundation of smooth jive. Once we've covered them, we'll move on to look at more ways that you can make your jiving even smoother. Hopefully, no matter what your previous experience, you'll find some material on this DVD helpful to you. If you master all the techniques on this DVD, your dancing should improve, plus your ability to learn new moves of every kind, plus the pleasure you can bring to those you dance with by being the perfect partner. If you want to be able to dance moves like these smoothly, staying on balance and on the beat, you need to develop a light, flexible connection. We're going to look at how you can achieve that and as a result, improve your dancing. Every partner dance style has its own requirements for tension and connection. Modern jive is a simple concept which has evolved into one of the most varied dance styles that there is. Moves from many other dance styles have been adapted and incorporated into modern jive. As a result, there are many modern jive moves which require different types of connection and tension. Now, tension is actually a very misleading word. It means pulling or stretching. And we don't want any stretching and we really don't want any pulling either. A lead should be a gentle invitation. It doesn't need to be a pull. When the lady follows, she should be moving herself. She doesn't want to be dragged around the dance floor. It's called lead and follow. It's not called drag and resist. <laughs> Men need to understand that when we talk about a strong lead, it has nothing to do with strength. It's about clarity. When you are too strong, the lady will not tell her friends that you have a strong lead. She'll say, you're rough. Ladies need to understand that they should react immediately to a lead and follow where the man is leading, not resisting or fighting against it so that the man has to work harder. If she tries to take the lead instead of following, then the dance becomes a wrestling match. It's always worth watching your partner as they walk off the dance floor after a dance with you. If they're rubbing their shoulders, then you may need to think about your leading or following. So, let's look at tension. 
When I hold my hand like this, it's already under tension. My muscles are keeping it from flopping down. When the lady offers her hand, she should likewise be holding it up so that she's not dragging my hand down. So starting from these positions, all we need to enable lead and follow is some connection. So all we have to do is bring our hands together until they touch. This is a basic connection. Now you need some tension. Everyone will tell you that. But what they don't normally tell you is how much tension. Is it one gram or a hundred kilograms? The best answer I've found in discussing this with countless teachers and champions is that you should start with zero tension and only increase from there to the minimum that you need to make the move successful. Now that connection is along the line between you and your partner. Don't pull your partner's hand up or down or sideways. So, I'm going to offer my hand to my partner down at waist level. She's going to hook over it with zero tension. Right? Now, it's important that when you do that, you're right down at your waist level, in fact, the lady's waist level, so that this part of the lady's arm is horizontal. Okay? It's got to be nice and comfortable for the lady. Uh, that should be nice, relaxed tension here. And the lady shouldn't arch her wrist up, because if she puts her wrist up like that, I haven't got any connection on this side of the hand. I've got the fingertips here, but not over there. If she relaxes her hand into a natural position, then when I move my hand forwards towards the lady, she can feel it inside her hand. So now I can pull very gently towards me, or I can push very gently away, and the lady's going to feel that. So I'll start just by pushing very gently away, and the lady's going to step back. So, we're going to get a basic connection like this. I'm going to let the lady know that I want her to step back by moving my hand very gently. She can feel that. And she steps back. Now, in order to get the lady to for come forwards, I've got to pull on her fingertips. right? But if I just move them a fraction of an inch, she can feel that. right? And what you need to understand is that a lead is a signal from the fingertips to the lady's feet. So, when I pull very gently on those fingertips, the lady is going to start walking. She's moving her feet herself. I'm not having to drag her across the floor. It's likewise very important the lady doesn't pull. If at this point, as I pull on the fingertips, the lady pulls back, then she's slowing herself down, she's delaying herself. Remember, it's the fingertips tell the feet what to do. If I offer the hand here, pull very gently on the fingertips, the lady starts moving, and her feet are going immediately to follow where I'm leading her. It's amazing how often in modern jive your hands can slip apart or somebody can get hurt because you're gripping too tightly. So let's look at the hands very carefully. The lady's going to hook her hand over the man's hand, which is down at a level that lets her arm remain horizontal, down at her waist level, and facing his uh, waist. If the man tilts his hand, then the lady's hand's going to slip away. So firm platform, gentlemen. If the lady lets her fingertips slide off, then again, you haven't got a grip. And if the lady grips too tight, like that, then it's very bad because the man now can't let go when he needs to. The thumbs aren't involved at all. So it's a nice loose grip, which enables you to lead the lady and also do things like turns and returns without any problem. So the hands are loosely hooked together, not gripping each other, and the thumbs are out of the way. Now, ladies, if the man's holding your hand, it's because he wants to use it to lead you. So one of the rules of modern jive is that the lady doesn't normally let go of the man's hand. It can spoil the move. But men don't grip the lady's hand because sometimes it may hurt if you twist it the wrong way at the wrong time. And then if he, she is being hurt, she does need to be able to let go. So a firm connection with very low light, very light tension and no thumbs, and then we can lead each other backwards and forwards easily. Try how small a lead you can use to make the lady's feet follow your fingertips. This is a quiet hand. This is a noisy hand. <laughs> now, lead and follow is a conversation between the fingertips. If you're shouting, you can't hear the lead and follow. Another point to consider is that when the man leads, the lady's supposed to follow. 
If I lead like this, then this is what I'm asking the lady to do. It may be fun occasionally, but it's probably not what you really intended. So, go for the quiet hand. Some people teach beginners to move their hands on the beat. For instance, when they're waiting for a, uh, the dance to start, their hands will be going from side to side like this. It's much better to use your feet. You want to get the music in your head, in your soul, and then move your feet to the beat. Keep the hands free for leading and following. Dancing is all about interpreting to music. Uh, and the key part of that is getting your feet moving on the beat. Once you've done that, you can start developing on that long journey to great musical interpretation. But the first step is get the feet moving on the beat. So keep those hands nice and gentle. Now, at the beginning of a dance, you need to have some way of letting the lady know that she's supposed to step back. And some clubs teach that you do a little circle. There's a few important things to understand about that circle. First of all, it's a small circle, not a big one. Try and do a subtle lead, so the lead is a conversation between you and your partner. The result of it is wonderful dancing for everybody else to see, but the lead should be subtle just between the two of you. Second important thing to notice is that it's led by the man. <laughs> I often see ladies in classes with their elbows stuck out like this, ready to lead that little circle. But if the intention is for the man to let the lady know when to step back, then how can the lady lead it? Ladies, relax those arms, ladies. <laughs> right? The last thing about those circles is there's only one of them. You do a circle at the beginning of the dance to let the lady know to step back, and then you carry on dancing, and the hands can then relax. There are no more circles. In fact, you don't actually need a circle. If you've got a good connection, the hands still, then any small motion can be felt by the lady. So a little push, maybe a little rise, or a little push forward is quite enough. If you want to do a little circle, that's fine, but realize that it can be a small movement, and it can be any movement you like that lets the lady know what to do. So. Let's try stepping uh, and leading the lady backwards and forwards to some music. So, we're moving to the music. Our feet are moving, our bodies are moving, but this hand stays still, because that's the one I'm going to lead with. And when I'm ready, I just push back and the lady goes backwards. I pull with the fingertips and she comes forwards. Okay? The important thing to understand is that what you do with the connected hand is technique. What you do with your spare hand or your body is style. So, as long as we've got a quiet hand here, the lady can do anything she likes as long as she keeps this hand still. Right? So, that's the quiet hand. Now, another reason for keeping the hand quiet is that if you do this kind of strong bounce, apart from making it much more difficult for the man to lead and for the lady to follow, it also can cause repetitive stress injuries to the elbows and the shoulders. So try going for that quiet hand to make your dancing easier and more enjoyable. OK, let's look at the arms. The arm position is very important in modern jive because if your arms are in the wrong place, it can sometimes mislead the lady. If you raise your hand too high, she may think it's a lead for her to go under it. Or you can take your partner off balance. So having the hands high or wide isn't good. The hands are relaxed in between you. It's also important that as you step backwards and forwards, you let your arms bend in and out like this. If one person, say the lady in this example, keeps her arms locked like this, then as she steps back, <laughs> the man gets pulled off balance. So you need to do that. Practice moving your arms in and out gently. So then when you step backwards and forwards, the, arms, the hands can stay stationary and the arms are going in and out. A good way of practicing this is to go knuckle to knuckle. Then you practice keeping a light connection between the knuckles and as you step back, in order to keep that contact, you have to bend the elbows and move your arms in and out. So practice that to some music, go for that light connection uh, and see if you can make it really gentle. Dynamic tension 
is what you need when your arms are moving and changing position, as they are most of the time in modern jive. This is the default. Unless you need to change your tension for a particular move, then you should be in a relaxed state exercising dynamic tension. We'll show you what it is in a minute. Once you're moving, you need to be able to raise and lower your hands quickly and flexibly. The first secret to being a wonderful follower is to move your feet immediately in reaction to a lead. The second secret is to focus on keeping your hands touching the man's hands without him doing any work. This is a very useful exercise to help the lady learn how to follow the man's hand quickly and flexibly. What I'm going to do is raise my hand up and get my partner to follow it. So as I raise my hand up, the lady follows. And she should do that herself, giving no resistance. The way to test this is for the man to use both his hands, but only one of them is connected to the lady. And if I do that and that, if I can feel a difference between them, if one of them is being weighted down, then the lady isn't following well enough. When I do that, it should be completely effortless because the lady is using her own muscles to lift that hand up and bring it down exactly in contact with the man all the time. If you take both hands in, it gets a little bit harder. Then, as the man moves his hands around, he can move either hand in any direction, at any speed, and the lady has to follow without making the man do any work whatsoever. A good one to practice is a hallelujah. See if you can lead it at your speed, gentlemen, slowly or fast, and the lady following exactly as you are, so you never feel any resistance on your hands at all. That is dynamic tension. It's the key to successful modern jive. It's a light connection with flexible arms, and if you can master that, you're well on the way to becoming a great dancer. When men talk about a lady being light or heavy, there are two aspects. One, how much work does it take to get the lady to move across the floor? And two, how much work does it take to move the lady's arms? Both should be effortless. But sometimes it feels like you're trying to move her arm through treacle. Ladies, if you find yourself getting half a beat behind in some moves, this may be the reason. Having heavy, stiff arms slows you down. Try keeping your arms more flexible. Give them a lighter feeling. This will make it easier to follow the man's lead more quickly. Try it and see how much faster you can react and move. While you've got that great tension and connection, you need to keep that hook, the kind of grip that we talked about earlier. And the lady needs to keep that hook even though her arm is relaxed. Try making a hook and letting your arm dangle by your side and wave it around, but keep the hook. That hook's got to be there all the time. If it's not, then you slide off the man's fingers. So that's crucial to keeping the lead and follow working. So keep the hook, relax the arm. A gentle leader and a light follower is the perfect combination. The dance becomes a pleasure and fewer injuries are incurred. So ladies, next time that you find yourself being manhandled with too much power or strength, help the guy to understand. Tactfully compliment him on his moves, then ask him if he would mind being a little more gentle with you. If he makes these changes, don't forget to thank him at the end of the dance and tell him that was great. Ladies, one key point to remember when you're dancing is if the man's hand is moving without him doing anything, then you're probably leading. This raises an interesting challenge for ladies who are helping beginner men. Should they lead the man's arms into the right position? Well, by offering verbal advice instead, you'll help the man to learn how to do it himself and learn what it feels like to lead. For yourself, you also need to be careful not to build the wrong reflexes or the wrong muscle memory. If you do, you'll find it harder when you're following. The techniques for leading and following are very different, and people who want to do both have to learn two different sets of reflexes and be able to switch between them. It can be done, but it's not easy to do both well. Try dancing an octopus, putting all that into practice. 
If you're not familiar with the octopus, you'll find it at the back of the DVD. So we're going to step backwards and then lead the lady with our fingertips. And the ladies are just going to follow those fingertips. Gentlemen, go for light lead. Go for clarity, not strength. Ladies, go for that dynamic tension. A light connection with flexible arms. As I said earlier, we're working on lead and follow, not drag and resist. Once you understand that the lady is going to move herself to where you want her, then you should realize that you don't need to drag her there. All you need to do is invite her. We'll demonstrate that with a first move. If you're not familiar with the first move, you'll find the lesson later on this DVD. We're going to use the first move as an example of how lead is just an invitation. I'm only going to move my fingers a tiny bit and Karen knows that she should step back. I'm just inviting her to step back. Um, to lead her in, I'm going to move my hand from there to there and she will follow. I'll follow through to my shoulder. She'll come in towards me. Now to get her to turn out, some men make the mistake of forcing the lady out like this. It uh, gets to a wrong, bad position. The man's off balance. He can't get himself straight and upright. The lady's off balance as well. And it's wrong anyway because the first move's supposed to be a symmetrical position. We're supposed to be here nice and relaxed in exactly the same position. So the, the lead is from here to here and then I follow through to here. So from there I just turn the lady out and we relax. The same follows all the way through. I start the lead, the lady follows it. I start the lead the lady follows it. Remember that it's just an invitation. You don't need to force her into position. She's probably a better dancer than you, so let her do what she needs to do to get to the next position. So gentlemen, focus on a gentle invitation and relax. Ladies, focus on a light connection and flexible arms and relax. To be able to look good and to dance well, it's vital that along with any footwork you're doing, you must be balanced. If you're off balance, or if you'll pull your partner off balance, then the lead and follow are much harder and you can't dance smoothly. So let's look at posture. Modern jive is an upright dance, so your posture needs to be upright. So practice um, moves like this, where you bring your hands up out to the side and lower them help to raise your rib cage. just gets you feeling right. Don't slouch. Try and roll your shoulders back. If you slouch forward, then you're throwing yourself off balance. Roll the shoulders back. Stand up straight. Imagine that you've got a string through the top of your head, through your centre of gravity, pulling you up. And try and raise yourself an extra inch higher. And then relax. Roll the shoulders back. Then you're in a good starting position. Now, dancing is normally done on the toes. Modern jive is no different. So when you're dancing, dance on your toes lightly. The heels are just off the ground. You're not up on points. Just heels slightly off the ground so that you can move to the music with your toes first and your heels touching the ground as necessary as you step. As you step backwards, you need to take your weight back with you. So when you step back, bring your weight back. As you step forwards, bring it forwards. So your center of gravity should always be above the weight-bearing foot, so that you're balanced at all times. That knuckle-to-knuckle -knuckle exercise, as we did earlier, is a good one for practicing your balance. Just make sure that you're taking weight backwards and forwards and not relying on your partner. You should never rely on your partner for stability. Uh, another time when it goes wrong is, uh, for instance, in a catapult. Very often when I'm dancing, I find that at this point, the ladies weighing down really heavily. They're not quite on balance, so they're relying on me. That makes it much harder to do a smooth spin afterwards. If the lady is on balance at this point, I can smoothly lead her into a spin and she can turn beautifully. So analyze your dancing. Think about which points you're leaning on your partner and relying on them and work on improving your balance so you don't need to. Sometimes the words we use can be misleading. We say, 
the man turns the lady. But in reality, what we really want is that the man leads the lady into a turn, and it's the lady who does the turn. The lady is responsible for turning all the way around until she can see the man again. She can only do that if she's on balance. You get the balance by having the hand above the lady's head in line with her centre of gravity. If the lady straightens her arm, she's moved away from that line. If she locks her arm out at the side, she's moved away from that line. If the man stirs her hand around, you've moved away from that line. Work on getting the hand just above the lady's head so she can turn easily. So you need to relax. You start the lead by taking the hand slightly around and then putting it over the lady's head and then stepping back. And if you watch the hand, it's actually going up and down rather than round. A little start for the return and then it's over the head and straight down. So don't force the lady, lead her into it, then relax and let her turn. Ladies, remember to go for that dynamic tension, the flexible arm. If, as you're being turned, you resist and fight back, then it slows you down. What you need to do is relax completely and spin your feet. Now, one, good ver one very good exercise for both the man's technique and the lady's is to do this with an air lead. What we're going to do is dance a turn and return without touching. So, you take your hand away and you move it a fraction of an inch, so not even touching, and then we dance the turn and return. We step back, we step in, the lady turns, the lady steps back, we return, and the lady steps back. <laughs> it's not easy. If you find your hand coming down faster than the man's, ladies, then try to adjust that speed. It's not easy, but it's good technique, so try and get that connection through the air. Look at what the man's doing and follow it. Turning and down, return and down. Beautiful. Men, now that you've seen her turning with an air lead, try to keep it nearly that light when you're leading her. So far, we've used dynamic tension in everything we've done. Keeping good connection, but with minimum tension. Allowing our arms to bend and twist into all the convolutions that modern jive puts them through. The other fundamental type of tension in modern jive is static tension. This is when the lady locks her arm into a fixed position, usually in preparation for a spin. There are two situations in which the lady must adopt static tension. The first is when the man indicates that he's about to spin her. The second is when she needs to tense up to avoid damage. Let's look at spins first. So in the lady spin, the man steps back with his right to right hand grip and then leads the lady to the right, forming a ball and socket. So my hand's like that, the lady's balled into it. And now what happens next is that I'm going to throw my arm like a frisbee, nice and smooth, horizontally around the lady's center of gravity to give her some momentum to spin with. If she has her arm relaxed completely, then when I push, nothing happens. So you do need to tense up. The lady goes into a static tension, tensed arm, and then when I push, the force goes through the shoulder, into the body, and the lady spins round. One important point to remember is that the lady shouldn't push back. If, when you get to this position, the lady pushes back as I try to spin her, then this is what happens. Now, you probably didn't want that to happen. You probably wanted the lady to spin. There's a theory that if you push the lady harder, she'll go around twice. In fact, if you push the lady harder, you'll probably throw her off balance. In my experience, the ladies that go around twice are the ones that are able to go around twice, and they don't actually need your help to go around. They can do it by themselves. So go for a nice, smooth, single spin. The same thing applies exactly the same in a push spin. When you step forward, you go to a flat hand, and again, that tells the lady to tense up, not to push back, but to take the force you're giving and spin through the shoulder. And when we say tense, we don't mean rigid. You should never be rigid. No part of your body should be rigid in modern jive. Keep a little bit of flexibility all the time so that you can absorb the forces that are being passed between you. 
There's a third position, which is very common, where the lady gets an indication she's going to spin, is when the man puts his hand over her wrist. So, for instance, if we do this double spin here, we start with a spin that way, and then I hook my hand over her wrist. And that hook over her wrist lets her know, oh, we're going to spin again. And we pull her back. So, those are the usual positions for static tension. The other time the lady should lock up is to protect herself. There was an example in the move we just did. Let's do it from this side. That Wurlitzer, when we step back, as I come in and flatten this hand, that tells the lady I might be going to spin her, but in fact, because I push gently and keep hold, she knows it's not a spin. However, when does she know when to stop turning? The answer is that the arm is not designed to go behind the body. When you get to this position here, where the arm is behind the body, this joint is very weak and it's very easy to get damaged. You should always lock your arm up before it gets horizontal with your body. And the same with your elbow. You don't want it locked out straight. If everything's straight, then if the man pulls, he's pulling on the little tendons in your shoulder. So if you've got a nice relaxed arm with a bit of slack in it, then if he pulls a little bit, you've got some room to manoeuvre. So always tense up there because it's probably going to be a spin. The other point uh, where your hands need to lock up to save yourself is when the hand goes above the neck. As the hand goes up, normally you need to relax it because you could be doing some complicated twisty move. But again, the hand, the arm, isn't designed to go back behind your ear, nor is it really designed to go forward too far. So this distance between your ear and your nose is a good safety zone to work in. You're probably using it already in turns and returns. As you get to that position, you either lock up and force yourself back, or if you're able to turn, you turn. Now the hand is designed to go over the head, so when the man's doing a comb, that works fine. But gentlemen, be careful with the ladies, they're very delicate, and they can't always tell which way you're going to move the hand. So if she tenses up at this point, when you're trying to do a comb, don't force her. Relax, give her another beat, and if the resistance drops, then you can take it over into the comb. So ladies, keep yourself safe in those areas, but let the man take you over the head with a turn or a comb. A lead is something that's intuitive. It's something that your partner can understand without having to be taught exactly what it means. For instance, when I pull the lady's fingertips towards me, it means I want her to come towards me. That's obvious. That's a lead. A signal, on the other hand, has no intrinsic meaning. It's something that someone's made up and that has to be taught to everyone that's going to use it. This is a signal that quite a lot of people understand, but unless you've seen it before and taught what it means, then you can't guess that it means when you get beside me in a first move, I want you to bend your knees so that I can throw you forwards into a first move jump. It's not intuitive. It's a signal. There are very few universally understood signals. Modern jive is really about following leads. There are some conventions. Uh, they're leads, but they're not completely intuitive. Uh, they're very simple, they're very widely used. There's things like the flat hand and the ball and socket that are used for leading the lady into a spin. There's the Archie or Conan spin, where you turn the lady's hand over to let her know that you want to spin past you. There are also some simple signals that are taught widely. There's uh, the man spin, for instance, where you stick your arm out at the side. And there's the neck break, where you put your arm up here. In fact, these are mainly used for teaching beginners how to get their hands into the right position for the move. That isn't actually very stylish. And although it does help you to get the right place for your hand, you don't need it. Let's look at uh, the man spin and the neck break with the hands smoothed out, just bringing them across and bringing them through smoothly and stylishly. <laughs> One simple signal that is pretty intuitive is the offer of the hand. When the man offers his hand to the lady, it usually means he wants her to take it. But not always. It can also be used just to get her moving in the right direction. Now Karen knows that the offer of the hand is a lead to move, not to take.
So when I do something like a pretzel, like this, where I offer my hand behind, you'll notice she doesn't lunge out to get it, because she knows that it might be just to get her to move in the direction I want her to, and I wasn't going to take it at all. Another move of a similar nature uh, is where I offer the hand behind over here. Again, there's no way she can reach it in one beat. Ladies, don't lunge out for it. Ignore it. When you step back, with the hand being offered, and the man brings you in, you ignore it completely still. It's only when he turns you round and you can reach it that you take it. So yes, it's a signal, but you don't need to rush to grab it. Apart from the simple signals I've just covered, everything on this DVD is about leading. One of the joys of modern jive is that you can dance with a complete stranger from the other side of the world, and nearly everything you lead and follow will work, if you do it well enough. Many partner dancers rely on a frame to maintain the connection between the partners. When you make a frame, you're putting your arms, or the upper part of your bodies, into a fixed relationship. Let's look at West Coast Swing. For instance, in West Coast Swing, the lady forms a frame with her arms so that the arms are a constant distance from the body and fixed in position. So if you watch, as I step back, the lady has to step forward, and as I turn, the lady has to turn with me. The lady's arm stays in the same position all the time. That's a frame. Now let's look at modern jive. Uh, let's do a simple move like a first move, and watch how the frame breaks, even from the first step backwards. We're going to step back and step in, and if you watch the body and the arms, the relationship is changing all the time. In modern jive, there is no frame. However, because modern jive has been extended to include an, an enormous number of moves from other kinds of partner dancing, there are moves that are now in the modern jive repertoire that do need a frame. Let's show you one of them. This is called a Manhattan. <laughs> So, in the Manhattan, you have some footwork. I'll teach the man's footwork first. It goes like this. The man's going to keep his right foot where it is, but step on it. But he starts by going forward on his left foot and bringing his weight forward, then back onto his right foot, then onto his left foot behind him, then forward onto his right foot. So we're just walking left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And the right foot stays where it is, but it does go up and down as he steps. We're also going to do that turn that you saw. To do the turn, you need to step out of the line of dance. This is the line of dance. We're going to bring the lady through, so I've got to step out of the way behind it. So to do that, I'm going to step forward on the left, and then take a big step back on the right, putting it behind me, and then I can step through following the lady with my right foot, and then forward on my left again. Okay, now the lady's footwork is the opposite. She is going to go, as the man goes forward on his left, she is going to go back on her right, and then keeping her left foot stationary, bring the right foot forward and behind her. Now this, is a, this, uh, this kind of move uses a body lead, so you need to make sure that your weight is going backwards and forwards, because that's what's leading the lady. So let's try it with a partner. I'm going to start by using a first move to get us into a Manhattan position. You step back. As you step forward, you start thinking about the fact you're going to follow your lady, you bring her into the side, and as you turn her out, instead of stepping back, you step forward on the left. And now you're in the Manhattan position. And then we can step forwards and backwards. Now when you get to this position, you need to make a frame. The right hand goes around the lady's back, along the bra line is the strongest position for leading her, and the shoulders here are joined together. The lady's arm is resting gently on the man's arm, the man's arm is pressing gently against the lady's body. This forms a connection. You don't have to squeeze, but you can feel that. And it's that that's allowing me to lead the lady backwards and forwards. So as I go forwards, the lady can feel that connection and she goes forwards. As I go back, she can feel the connection and she can feel my hand on her back and she comes forward. I'm leading her with my body. Right? She's just keeping her body going with my body. Now this spare hand here you will find people who, as they're dancing, go backwards and forwards like this. 
that actually is throwing the lead off and it's not needed at all. If you want to use it, then have it quiet. But you don't actually need it and it's good practice not to use it at all. So get rid of that hand and try leading the lady backwards and forwards. Then when you want to do the turn, just step backwards out of her way, keep the connection and she will follow. For both of you, it's always left, right, left, right, left, right. There's no hopping, right? And then when I want to lead her into it again, I just step out of the way and she follows through. If it's not quite working, use that right hand, get it a little bit further round, and as you want her to step forward on the right foot, lift a little bit and pull a little bit harder with that hand so that she comes forward a bit with a bigger step and then she can do that turn more easily. Okay? So, uh, when you've got a Manhattan frame, you can play around with it in other ways. Instead of just going forwards and backwards, you can carry on walking. And because she's locked into you, she'll go with you. For an interesting variation on the Manhattan, try letting go completely and just leading the lady with your eyes. In fact, you're leading her with your body. Use your body language to let her know which way to go and see if you can get her to follow you. So the frame and static tension play an important part in modern jive. But remember, once you've finished a spin from a static tension lead or something like a Manhattan from a frame lead, when you go back into your next modern jive move, go back to dynamic tension, get that light connection again with the flexible arms. <laughs> Let's look at a slightly different type of frame. From a first move, you can get into this position and do moves like these. In all of these moves, the lead is coming from the man's body and the connection is through the lady's arm and the man's arm over here where they're touching each other and the man's arm is touching the body. Gently squeezed together, not pressured. Then when the man moves, the lady moves with him. We can get into this position very simply. Uh, move like a first move will get you in. We just step into a first move, turn the lady out. And then as we bring her back, we step forward and block her. Using that right arm, again across the bra line, to get a good strong hold on the lady. Now you don't need to be completely close together because the lead comes from this connection over here and the right arm. And ladies, if you feel the man's coming too close, you can use this left arm here to block slightly. You can use slight pressure there to hold the man away. Gentlemen, if you feel any pressure there resisting against you, please respect it. You can still do all the moves with that distance between you. So, we've got into this close move position. You just relax into each other and then the ladies need to relax from the hips down and let their lower part of their body, their legs, move with the man. So as he moves to the left, she goes to the left. As he moves to the right, she goes to the right. So you can take her backwards and forwards. You can turn it round. And it's all just coming because she's relaxed and wherever I go, she goes. You can play around with it. You can double time it. You can put in figure of eights anything you like. As you're going left and right, keep the upper part of your body upright unless you want to put one in for emphasis. And then if you want to bring the lady out into an open position, you just open your arm out. She's connected and so she'll step out with you. And then you can go back in slow, slow, rock, step, slow, slow, rock, step. And you can speed it up. You can go quick, quick, rock, step, quick, quick, rock, step. And you can move it around. You can take it in any direction you like. You can go as far as you like. Because you've got that good connection between you, you can then go into a spin turn just by walking forwards. That's the hardest one, the end one, the spin turn. We get into it, we're locked together. 
I bring the lady out, and then this time, as I come forward, I keep walking. Now, ladies, the important thing to remember here is that you don't walk backwards. You walk on the spot, stepping forwards on the left foot and stepping on the spot in the right foot. When you want to finish, you just stop walking, gentlemen, and let your arm open out, and the lady comes out, and you can finish it off with a first move. When you're doing these kind of moves, keep them nice and smooth. For instance, in the spin turn, after we've stepped in and started walking, don't go from side to side. It's not a penguin walk. It's much nicer if you spin upright and you can go much faster. And when you're dancing with the man, ladies, be sympathetic to what he's doing. If he's going slow, slow, then don't you go triple, triple. You want to do a bouncy bit? So if I'm going like that, it doesn't work so well if she's going like that. You should be relaxed and smooth with the man going with his body. And then you can do nice smooth turns like that. There are, of course, lots of opportunities in modern jive for the lady to take the initiative and to change what's happening. And as you get more experienced, it's good to give the lady space and time to do her own thing. But that aside, the lady is usually following the man. When the lady is following, then initiative is a bad thing. But I find that ladies often stop in the middle of a move and say, I don't know what to do. The answer is usually very simple. If you're moving, keep moving. If you're turning, keep turning. If the man stopped you, then stay where you are. To illustrate the principle that if the lady's stationary, she should stay stationary, let's look at a simple comb duck. I'm going to step back, come into a, a comb, and then I'm going to do some ducks. And I want the lady to stay where she is, so it looks like this. Now, if the lady steps back, it looks like this. That doesn't look so good. In fact, if the lady tries to help at all, it can look bad. If she even lifts her arm up, then it looks like this. And again, it's not so good. Now, the fact that her arm is stationary doesn't mean that the rest of her body and her other arm have to stay stationary. She can work it any way she likes. So a good move would look like this. Much better. Now, to illustrate the idea of uh, if the lady's moving, she should keep moving, let's do another move. To do that walk past, we just start with a two-handed hold and a double-handed return. So I offer both hands as we step back, and then I bring the lady through with two hands and out to the side. Now, instead of stepping in front of the lady, I've stayed out here, out of the line of dance, which means that the lady's got space to move forwards. If you do this move in freestyle with someone who doesn't know these principles, then as you bring them forward from here, they'll turn. And you can just pick up the hand and carry on dancing. Now, a lady who does know about the principles of not turning allows you to play around a lot more. For instance, as we bring her through like this, I can let her walk past, get behind her, and then bring her back and catch here. So from that position where she's over here, I'm just keeping still. I've leant away from her to emphasize the distance here. But once I've started her forwards, I just wait. Then I step behind and take the shoulders. And then I get out of the way to pull her back. Another nice variation of that is this one. To do those waist blocks, you start in exactly the same way. You lead the lady through in a double-handed return, getting out of the line of dance. You pull her forwards, and as she's coming forward, you place your left hand on her belt. Careful, gentlemen, about the positioning here. There are very few safe positions. Aim correctly. As she tries to go past, you then pull her back and catch her on the back. 
If the lady hasn't turned, then you get this nice motion where you can both go forwards and backwards. As you want to finish, you just let her go past you, put your hands on her shoulder, and you can do the uh, pullback we did a minute ago, or you can spin her and catch. Now this move illustrates the idea of if you're turning, keep turning. <laughs> It's a simple basket to start with and then from here I let go with the left hand and I'm going to use the right hand to unwrap the lady all the way around to face me so that we can go into a position here where we can do a Manhattan. Now what goes wrong with this move usually is that when I get to this position here where I'm unwrapping the lady, the lady gets to here and she stops and says I don't know what to do. If you have your hand too high, then she's right. Remember the Wurlitzer? If I've got the hand up here, she can't unwrap anymore because the, the arm doesn't go behind the back. But it's quite cleverly designed. If I lower the hand and turn it, then it does go behind the back. So, when you're leading that move, that's what you've got to do. Really low, turn the hand. So, we'll try that from that position. Where we get to here, I'm using my right arm to nudge her forwards and then my right hand is going down low and turning and she keeps turning. When she gets round she can put her hand on my shoulder like this or on my arm. I've got a connection here between my hand and her waist so I can immediately push her into a Manhattan and as long as she's got the body lead feeling there that she's connected then she'll step with me. Exits, I can just take this hand and step forward and under an alternate exit from this position as we're stepping is that as we step back I can just pull on that right hand and she'll unwrap. I can unwrap her to the side or I can keep wrapping her into my side. So ladies, when you're not sure what to do, you have a choice. You could panic. Not recommended. If you know what you're doing, then you can take the initiative. Do something that really different to surprise him. Or just follow the simple rule. If you're moving, keep moving. If you're stationary, stay where you are and work that body. We've taught you now the basic techniques of lead and follow so that you can make your modern jive really smooth. But to get your dancing even smoother, there are more things you can do. And we're going to look at some of those now. The first one we're going to look at is footwork. Even though modern jive doesn't rely on any specific footwork, it's still dancing and the feet should be moving. And since it's dancing, we should be moving our feet on the beat. Try to keep it simple. It should be as smooth and relaxed as walking down the street. Now when the teacher counts five, six, seven, eight, or counts out the beats through a move, they're emphasizing the major body movements that you need to make, stepping back on one, stepping forward on two. But when you think about your feet, you need to think about the musical beats. There are twice as many of these. When the teacher counts five and six and seven and eight, those are the musical beats. So, we're going to step back on one, and we're going to step forward on two. But we want to use the and as well. The way to do it, one option, is to trail the other foot. So as we step back on one, we let the second foot trail slightly, then we step forward onto it, and let the back foot trail forward slightly, and then step back onto it. So that looks like this. One and two and three and four. Okay? Instead of trailing the foot, you can tap with it. So that would look like this. You step back on one, on the and, you tap that foot and then step forward onto it. Then you tap that foot and step back onto it. It's important that when you tap, you don't put any weight on it. The weight shift is a different thing we're going to work on later. For now, it's firmly weight balanced on the foot you step back on and just tap with the spare foot. So that looks like this. One and two and three and four. 
The weight shift is very important. That's where you step back on one, and then on the and, you step back on the other foot. Then step forward with the first foot on two, step forward with and. So that looks like this. One, and, two, and, three, and four. The important thing is the ability to switch weight quickly from one foot to the other, so that you can have the right foot ready to lead forward or backward on, depending on what the move requires. Modern jive is great because it doesn't require you to use the same footwork as your partner. You can be doing one type of stepping, the lady can be doing a different kind. As long as you're both moving smoothly to beat, then it's great. Now, in order to make your modern jive look smooth and effortless, one of the first things to do is actually to practice walking. We talked about posture earlier, roll those shoulders back and stand up straight. And then what you want to do is glide. Try to avoid bouncing or kicking. Now, if you've got a move or a particular track that's going to work great with a bounce or a kick, then absolutely, bounce or kick. But in general, throughout the most part of your dancing, a smooth glide looks much better. Keeping your feet close to the floor is important. As you move, keep the feet close to the floor, dance on your toes, and also think about this position, this is called neutral, where the feet are together. As you're moving, make sure that your feet go through that neutral position. You don't want your feet wide apart. As you move, bring your foot through beside the other foot as you're walking. If you can practice that smooth, effortless glide, then it'll make your modern jive look much better. Now, ladies walk even better than men. By placing the foot in front so it's in line, you can get a much nicer look. Let the feet go through neutral and slide that foot, gliding effortlessly in front of the other one, and you look fantastic. Now, the important thing about dancing is to keep the feet moving. Let's practice a walk around so we can do that. To do that basket walk around, you step back, you wrap the lady in, and you need to anticipate. If you look at my foot here, because I want to go into a smooth walk around, I've got my left foot in the air, my weight forwards ready, so that as we get to this position, I start walking straight away. The idea is that the lady, as she's coming in, should just keep moving the whole time. No jerks, no stops. So, you step back, you wrap the lady in, and you start walking a lot earlier than you might think, and then you get round very easily. So, practice that smooth start to the walk around by anticipating it. It should be a smooth transition for the lady so that she never stops walking. Practice walks where you're going forwards in a circle or straight backwards and forwards. See how smoothly you can glide across the floor, keeping your feet moving all the time. Although we teach each move starting with a step back, in fact, once you're dancing, that step back takes place at the end of the previous move. The next move will work much better if you can start it facing each other the right distance apart. As you develop your modern jive, start by keeping it as simple as possible. Understand how you need to position yourself to make things smooth. Adding extra body ripples and rotations can look great, but make sure they're not detracting from the lead and follow. Perfect the basics first, and then enhance them. Now, since the lady is often spinning or turning, getting to the perfect position for the next move is not easy for her. So it's mostly the man's responsibility to be sympathetic to the lady and to move to where he needs to be. So, to make it smooth, the man needs to anticipate where the lady's going to end up and make sure he puts himself there. When we teach, we do it in a slot where everyone's in a nice rectangular area and the lady stays there so that, as I do a simple move and the lady turns, she ends up exactly the right distance away, exactly the right place. But when you're freestyling, it doesn't happen like that. The lady could go anywhere. So, for instance, if she does a travelling return instead, she could end up over there. And if I don't move, we can't start the next move. So while she's doing that travelling return, I've got to notice that she's doing it, and I've got to move myself to get facing her. It's the man's responsibility. Sometimes it's a matter of getting to the right position in the middle of a move. 
let's try one of my favourite moves to practice a smooth catch. This is called a hatch catch. Now, to make this a pleasant experience for the lady, the man needs to move into position beside the lady. No matter where she moves to as she spins, pick her up smoothly and be already walking as he picks her up so that she just continues moving smoothly into the walk around. To do the move, you start left to right and step back. You bring the lady in to stand side by side with you and as you do that, you raise your right hand up ready to place it against the lady's upper arm. So you step in side by side. So we're like this now, with my hand ready on her arm. I'm going to push very gently to get her to spin, and as she does, I'm going to let go with my left hand, and I'm going to turn with her, keeping my eyes on her as she turns. So she's turning, I get my left hand ready and slide it in behind her as soon as I can, so that I can pick her up and continue the walk. I've offered my right hand in front, so she's got her right hand in mine, and this is the position we walk round in. So practice that position first, so you know where you're trying to get to. You keep walking, and when you've had enough of the turning, you let go with your right hand and you slide your left hand across her back, down her arm as you slide away from her until you get fingertip to fingertip, and then you can draw her into a travelling return to finish the move. That's not an easy move for the man to do, but a smooth catch usually gets the response, ooh, that was nice, so it's well worth practising. Another way to smooth out your dancing is to make your arm movements flow. When you're taught to move like a basket, you're taught the hand positions to put your hands in for each beat. But you don't want to dance like that. If you do, it'll look like this. It'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not so good. Let's make it smooth. Keep the hands moving continuously all the time, going through those points. So it should look like this. We're going slowly, smoothly in, smoothly out, and smoothly round. Keeping your feet moving smoothly is also important. Ladies complain when the men are too stationary. So sometimes you see a catapult like this, where the man stands still and the lady is running around doing all the work. <laughs> it looks much better if you flow the move backwards and forwards, both going back both going forward, both moving away, both coming back and keeping that turning and moving all the time. The man also needs to plan ahead so that you can move smoothly from one move into the next. Try not to think of the dance as one move followed by another. Try to make the moves flow smoothly into one another. Some ideas which may help you are practice your favourite moves so that you can do them without thinking. Then you can be thinking about the next move while you're doing this one by reflex. Turns and returns are good for that. Really work on those so that you can make them reflexive and really use that time for thinking. Practice a few of your favourite moves as a sequence. Then you only have to plan ahead on the last move of that sequence. If you can't think of a move, then look at what the couples around you are doing. You may get some ideas. Have a couple of simple repetitive moves, like arm jives, ready to fall back on in an emergency. If you still aren't ready, just throw in an extra travelling return or two. By travelling, it makes it look as though you know what you're doing. Learn a few variations of the same move, different ways of finishing from the same start. Here's a nice example you may not have seen. If you find yourself doing an arm jive, then just start walking backwards. The lady will follow you in a circle, and when you've done a bit of that, you can let go with the right hand and carry on like that, finishing with a spin. Once you've got all that, the last thing is to do something with that spare arm. It's easy to be so busy thinking about everything else that it just ends up hanging at your side. It really doesn't matter what you do with it as long as you don't just let it dangle. You can hold it in front of you, you can hold it at your side, you can wave it around, sweep it through the air, you can click your fingers. Just practice doing something with it. 
That last move we did, the travelling arm jive, is a good one to practice on. You've got your hand completely free, you're travelling in a circle, you can sweep it around, you can click your fingers. Practice doing something with it and make your jive look even better. A lead is an invitation to the lady, which hopefully she will accept. You only need to make the invitation. So, in a basket, say, after we step back, I just lead her this far. Then it's over to her feet to carry on the move. But I don't stop moving my fingers just because she started moving. It's important to follow through as well. So I keep my hands moving smoothly to their next destination. If I just give a quick push to Karen's back, then she probably isn't going to start moving. She's much more likely to just glare at me. But if I connect smoothly and follow through, she's likely to start walking and even keep walking when I take my hands off. So go for that smooth lead with a gentle follow through. Remember, a strong lead is not about strength, it's about clarity. Give the lady a good invitation and then follow through, making sure there's no question about where you want the lady to go to. Sometimes, parts of some moves may feel better with a little more tension. When you do need to apply some more tension, always make sure that it is balanced. Always increase the tension smoothly and match your partner's tension. Let's look at an example of that. So to do that figure of eight into the squat, you start left to right. You step back. As you bring the lady into a figure of eight, raising your hand so that you can go under it, you change the hand grip and the hand. I'm going to bring my right hand across and go into a butterfly grip with the lady. So our thumbs are wrapped around each other and we're making a little butterfly and then we wrap our fingers down. Now, because this is quite a strong grip, we need to relax our arms even more as she goes past me. I'm now going to go under my arm and then I'm going to turn the lady in a clockwise direction and then we can do the drop into the squat. This signal to the lady lets her know if she knows the move that I'm going to do something so I can then go and drop and she can squat as well. We can come up slowly, the lady putting in figure of eights or ripples and then we step back. If you're doing this in freestyle, it's best when you first do it to keep your feet together so that the lady's not confused about what's happening. You can then extend into the leg behind you when, you've got it to, when you're doing it with a partner who knows it. Now let, let's look at that tension. As we get to this point here where we're about to go into the drop, the lady knows something's different happening. As I go down, I don't pull on her, I just make a strong platform. She goes down and now we ca we're counterbalancing against each other so that each one has the same tension. We've applied it smoothly and equally and as we come up, we reduce it smoothly so that we end up with low tension again so that we can step back easily. Keep your movements smooth all the time. When you step back, don't pull or jerk on your partner's arm. Some people do. Sometimes they do it as they step back. Sometimes they do it just after they've stepped back. Sometimes they do it just as they're starting to come forwards, dragging themselves in along their partner's arm. Whenever you pull or jerk, you're breaking your smooth connection and taking your partner off balance. Go for that light, responsive connection and keep it smooth. Make sure that your hand grip is clean and strong but loose. Ladies, don't do anything that could distract from allowing the man to lead you. When ladies splay their fingers out like this, apart from reducing the connection and making the lead and follow hard, it also makes the fingers more vulnerable, which means that the man's going to be worried about hurting them, so he's not 100% focused on what he's doing. So keep those fingers together, keep that nice tight grip all the time, that hook, so that all the time you're touching it's like that. Also, avoid straightening your fingers. You should have a hook all the time so that the man can lead you. If you straighten your fingers, which often happens in positions like this when the lady's posing, then the man's got nothing to hook against, he can't lead you. As Soon as you bend your fingers, then he's got a hook and he can start the next move. So keep the fingers hooked, keep that connection. 
Of course, all of this only applies to your connected hand, where technique is critical. You can style your free hand any way you wish. In general, you should keep everything flexible in modern jive – your body, your arms, your legs. Rigidity anywhere tends to spoil the look and make it harder to dance smoothly. It's especially important to keep a light, flexible connection on moves like the pretzel, where the man's hands go behind his back. In the pretzel, I step back, offering my hand behind. The lady steps in and takes my hand. I'm now in a very vulnerable position. If the lady pushes up at this point, she can do a lot of damage to my shoulders. Remember to focus on keeping your fingertips touching the man's and not moving his hand, even if you think you know what's coming next. As you continue the pretzel, keep that light connection to protect both of you. Let's look at a variation which requires a light touch. <laughs> To do that pretzel comb, you start an ordinary pretzel, the man offering his hand behind, the lady steps in and takes it, you both step to the left, lowering the left and raising the right, and now it changes. What normally happens is that the man's going to bring his hand across like that. In this case, I'm going to do a comb over the lady's head like that, and then let my hand slide down her arm so we step apart like that. This won't work. If uh, the lady resists, you get to this point and the lady thinks she knows what's happening, you may find your hand moving in a strange direction. Instead, just hold it there until she lets you and then comb her hair. We've covered a lot of material on how to make your dancing smoother. I hope you found it useful. There are lots of ways to spin. I'm going to look at some of the most common ones in modern jive. The two most important things you need in order to do a good spin are belief and balance. A pair of good shoes helps as well. This floor is not so great, so I've changed into something that spins a little bit more easily. So, to get the balance, first of all, get your posture right. Stand up nice and straight. In order to spin well, You've got to be spinning around your centre of gravity and everything's got to be symmetrical. So, bring your shoulders back, stand up straight, bring your arms out in front of you and feel completely balanced. Okay? Your heels should be slightly off the ground because you're going to spin on your toes. Now, the first thing you should try to do is just do a quarter spin. If you can spin from here to here, with perfect balance, then you can build on that. So don't try too hard, don't try and get too far to start with. The momentum for a spin comes from your arms and your shoulders. So to start with, I'm going to step back on my left foot and bring my arms across to the left. Bringing my hands around like that and then letting my heels off the ground so I can spin transfers the momentum from my arms into my body and I spin. To do a quarter turn you don't need a lot, so you step back on your left, you bring your hands out behind you, then you step forward onto the right, and as you do, you bring your hands round and bring your other foot up close, and you spin. Now it's conventional, and usually works very well, to step back on the foot that you span on. So I'm going to step back on my right foot now. Try that until you can do it really, really nicely. Make sure that as you bring your hands around, you make a symmetrical position so that you're not putting yourself off balance. Make sure that as you bring this spare foot in, that you're bringing it into the neutral position beside your other foot. It really helps if you can get a friend to look at you and tell you what you're doing wrong. Quite often, you'll be dropping one shoulder or dropping one hip without realizing it. Or you might be bringing one foot up into some strange position that isn't quite on balance. So, start by getting a friend to look at you and try that very simple quarter turn to the right. Another couple of things that might help you are your elbows. Don't bring them in too tight. If they're in too tight, it's not good. If they're out too far, you might hit your partner. Try and relax them like that as you come round. And your knees. 
bend your knees slightly. Uh, it helps. Any form of rigidity is going to throw you off balance. So let everything be just that tiny little bit loose. Then relax and don't try too hard. Uh, your chest position is important as well. Some people find it easier to spin after they've breathed in, and some people find it easier after they've breathed out. Practice both and see which one works for you. Once you feel uh, confident on getting around a quarter turn, then just bring those arms around a little bit faster, bring the shoulders around as you, with them, and see if you can go that little bit further. So back on the left, spin, and step back on the right. You need to be able to spin both ways. The other way, exactly the same with the opposite feet. We step back on the right, taking the hands to the right, step forward onto our left foot, spinning to the left, and then step back on our left. Now, in fact, what I've just done is the basic footwork for a turn and return. So, really worth practicing doing them one after another. Step back on the left and spin. Step back on the right and spin. Step back on the left. That's actually exactly how you get good turns in the turn and return. Let's show you that. So, finishing off a first move, Karen's going to step forward on her right foot so she can turn clockwise on her right and then step back on it. And then she's going to turn on her left and step back on that. Now, gentlemen, when you're leading a spin, if you're using both hands, always make sure that you apply equal pressure with each hand. So, for instance, in a push spin, I've got my flat hand ready to push on the lady's hand and I might have my hand on her waist as well ready to pull. You need to make sure that those are the same pressure and also you need to think about where her centre of gravity is. The push should be down very slightly so that you're aiming at her centre of gravity. The pull should be horizontal so that she gets a nice smooth spin. Don't throw her off balance. Another technique that you can use when you're spinning, not all the time, but when it's useful, is spotting. This involves focusing on one spot and leaving your head looking at that spot while you turn your body. Then whipping your head round to re-look at that spot and finishing off the spin. So, spotting looks like this. So, let's talk about double spins. If you want to get round twice on one spin, then you need the right shoes and the right kind of floor so that you can spin. You need the balance and the technique that we've been working on and lots of practice. And then, when you feel up to it, you just push yourself a little bit harder with those hands, bring them round a little bit sharper, bring the shoulders round a little bit sharper and see if you can get round further. When you're spinning, you use this spare foot in neutral. If I step back on the left, I'm going to bring it in side by side with the other foot as soon as I start spinning. But you keep it just hovering off the ground. We're just spinning on the toe of one foot. And when you want to stop, you put that foot down and then step back on the other one, the one you were spinning on. To do a double spin, just keep that foot in the air, don't put it down, you get the extra momentum and see how far you can get. If you practice well, you can get up to two spins, maybe even three. But if you can't do that, there are other ways of getting around twice. One is just to push yourself around with your spare foot. So you start off on the spin, and as you're going through the spin, you just put the spare foot down and push off as though you were on a scooter. So that looks like this, going around twice. Once, and push, and we get round. Another way of getting round multiple spins is to step. Just keep walking from one foot to the other, half a turn on each one. So you start off the same way, but once you're going, you go left, right, left, right, left, right, keeping the feet as close together as you can. The same technique is used in travelling returns when you're doing multiple turns. So it's worth being able to do it while you're travelling. You're going to turn, half a 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 turn. If you want to practice that going at high speed, you can use this arm to give yourself a bit of momentum. Just bring it across and out and across and out. That way you can get some momentum to travel a long way. It's important to decide whether you're going for two turns at normal speed or going for double speed. If you want to do double speed spins, make sure you really are doing them at double speed and only taking one count, not one and a half. 
Let's look at ways of giving the lady an extra turn at high speed. Here's an example of a move with a double speed spin in it. To do that move, I just use a secret move, stepping back and offering my hand. The lady steps in. Now, I want to get a tight lock, so rather than making her do all the work, I'm going to travel forwards in a circle as I turn her out, and then I'm going to bring her hand round. So that we end up so that she's quite tightly wound, and I've got the fingertips here locked, so I can pull on those fingertips, and I've got my hand here ready, flattened against this hand, so I can spin her. Then, by giving her a little impetus with this hand, putting the hand above her head, letting go with this hand and then letting my fingers rotate and pushing again, I can get her to do two turns at double speed. A common move where you do multiple turns at normal speed is the travelling return. By keeping your hand high and adding a little rotation, you can invite the lady to turn more than once. So by keeping my hand high and rotating loosely, I can get the lady to turn multiple times as I bring her past me. Like this. One, two, three, and step back. So the illusion spin is led like this. I usually start with an accordion, and once I've got the left hand low, I bring it up and start the lady turning. She's going to turn multiple times clockwise now. As she completes that first turn, I then let her hand fall onto her wrist and take my hand away. She continues to turn. I pick the hand up again so that I've got both hands. I use my right hand to give a little extra turn each time I turn her. And when I'm finished, I lower my right hand to help her to stop. Now, when you're doing that, you need to control the speed. So as you're doing it, you need to make one rotation each time you bring your hand round on the beat. One, two, keeping to the beat. If you decide to speed up, make sure the lady's on balance, only do a couple of slow ones, and then start turning twice as fast as you saw in the demonstration. With a bit of practice, you can achieve it. While this is going on up here, the lady is using that technique we looked at of stepping the turns. She's just going walk, 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 keeping her feet in as neutral a position as possible so that she can keep stable. Sometimes the lady will move. It's not easy to stay on the spot. Go with her. This is an introduction to drops and leans. I'm going to teach the basic principles of some of the common types of drop. You should be able to apply these principles whenever you're learning new drops. There is a hints and tips document that you can download from modernjive.com forward slash drops. The left leg seducer can be done from many different moves. We're going to teach it from a first move. So we're going to step back, step in side by side, and turn the lady out. This is where it changes. At this point, I'm going to use my left hand to bring the lady round and turn to her so that we end up at right angles to each other. I'm also going to throw this hand over my shoulder to get it out of the way. Once it's up there, I'll let go. Some really important things here are, first of all, that we're at right angles to each other. We're forming a T. My body's the top of the T, Karen's is the leg of the T. The second thing is that I use my right hand to bring her in close. There should be no space between your bodies here. 
I'm going to lower her centre of gravity. If I'm out here, as her centre of gravity goes down, I'm going to be pulled over on top of it, which is bad. I want to keep my back straight. So I'm going to use my hand to pull her in close. So this is the starting position for most drops, the lady and the man close together, at right angles, ready to drop. Let's look at the positions the man and the lady need to take as they go into the drop. First of all, the man. The man has to give a good platform for the lady. So first of all, he's going to step out to the left, and then he's going to squat. If you want to get a deep drop, you've got to squat all the way. So you need to practice getting all the way down there. And when you go down, you should keep your back straight. So you go down, and while you're down there, your knees should be pointing out slightly along the line of your toes, and your back should be straight, not twisted to the side, not twisted over, not twisted forwards. That's the position for most drops. So practice that, and when you can do that well, you'll be able to give the lady lots of support. While the man's doing that, the lady has to go down into a drop as well. What she's going to do is taking most of her weight on one foot, slide the other foot along the ground, and make a straight line of her body as she goes down. The important thing to do is to make sure that your center of gravity is going straight down. Don't bring it forwards, there should be no weight on that forward foot. And don't throw it backwards so you're taking yourself off balance. Get the feeling of just sitting to start with. Just do that. And then practice going down a little bit further, keeping the toe on the ground and getting a straight line from the tip of the head to the tip of the toe. Now we'll put the two together. One important thing to remember, ladies, is that this arm that's around the man's neck is only there to keep it out of the way. It's not there for you to hang on with. If you hang on with it, then as you go down, you're going to pull him over your body, which is bad. So let the arm slide slowly off his shoulder as you go down. So the drop looks like this. Now to get back up again, as soon as you start coming up, bring both feet in and use both of them to stand up. Now in that drop position, when you're down here, you should be able to rest the small of your back on the man's leg. It should be really comfortable. The bodies of both people should not be twisted or turned in any way. An alternative to putting the arm over the neck is to put it around the waist. Works very well if the lady is a lot shorter than the man. That looks like this. We're stepping back, we're stepping in, we're turning out. And now I'm going to throw her hand around my waist as I pull her in. Get her in close, get my other hand behind her back to support her, and then lower her. Now, there's a few style points here. The lady can look, make her leg look better if she tilts her toe out, points it along the floor. She can use her hand and put it into different positions. And she can also turn her head to look to the side. All of these things make the drop look better. Be very careful what you do with that spare leg, ladies, as you go into the drop. It needs to be out there on the ground, but be very careful, even though you have no weight on it, that it doesn't spring up into the air. That looks very bad. Styling it by raising the knee is a different matter entirely. That's okay, but it does change the balance slightly, so best to practice that with a partner who knows what he's doing first. Which leg should the lady take her weight on? The answer is very simple. If you've got one leg better than the other, take the weight on the strong leg. But if you're not constrained like that, then again the answer is very simple. The idea is to give a nice straight line to the audience. So when I go down with Karen on this side, she's going to straighten her left leg and take her weight on her right leg. If I do the drop on the other side, then she'll use her inside leg, the left leg, and again show a straight line to the audience. To make it look really good, make sure, ladies, that as you go down, you keep a nice plank feeling there. Pull those muscles in and get a straight line from the tip of the head to the tip of the toe. <laughs> To do the ballroom drop, start right to right, step back offering the left underneath. Then bounce in and change the hand grip to a butterfly grip on each hand. Wrap your hands around each other so you've got a good grip and step back. Then you're going to do a double-handed yo-yo. I'm going to bring my right hand up to my left shoulder, my left hand to my right hip, like this, so the lady comes in side by side. 
Then I'm going to turn the lady out. And this is where it changes from a normal yo-yo. I'm going to bring her in, raising the right hand high and turning her so that she ends up, as I turn in towards her, at right angles to me. This is the same T position we used in the left leg seducer. All the details of the technique are in the left leg seducer tutorial. You should study that first. Now to do the ballroom drop, I'm going to lower my right hand as I step out to the left and let the lady sink to the floor. I'm going to keep my left hand where it is until my right hand reaches it and then I'm going to let both hands extend to take the lady right down. Then I'm going to bring her back up again. She's bringing both feet in to help her stand up and I'm raising my right hand up high. I'm going to let go with the left hand and turn her out with the right hand to finish. To make that move work well you need to practice that movement of bringing your right hand down where your left is stationary and then extending both arms. Both partners also need to be very careful that as they do the move they don't tense up and keep their arms locked in at a tight angle. If you watch the arms as we go down they're all smoothly extending so that you get the full extension and the lady can go right down. And then as I bring her up most of the arms are tensing up again apart from the ones that raised up high. Now ladies, in order to make that move look good you need to make your body into a plank again. Sagging in the middle or thrusting upwards in the middle don't work. Tighten those muscles, make it into a plank. Let's show you a nice variation. This one, uh, we're going to show you how to get into the move a little bit faster. I'm going to change the grip as I start the yo-yo. When you practice you can smooth it out and speed it up like that. Then I'm going to turn her and drop her. Once I'm sure that everything's stable, I'm going to step across with my right leg and then walk back fast, raising my hands to stand her up and step back. do the ginger drop, I'm going to start left to right, step back, bring the lady into a first move, turn her out, and this is where it changes. I want to get her into a comb on my right hand side. One easy way of doing this is to do an inside turn here, taking the hand through the middle, and I'm going to walk forwards in a circle as she turns, so that we end up side by side, ready to go into the drop, her arm combed around my neck. We start with a little lean. So to do a lean, you get your bodies close together. The lady keeps her feet together. The man's supporting her with his right hand. The man's going to step out to the left and lean. As he does so, the lady just leans into him, cuddling up if she wants to as she does so. His hand should be free to style if he wants it. And then he stands up again. An alternative, ladies, is to raise the left leg up as the man steps out to the side. So you can add a little bit of style to it. The second part of the ginger drop is to go into a right leg seducer. To do this, I put my right hand onto the lady's hip. I'm going to use that to turn her body slightly. Again, I'm either going to leave my left leg out to the side or step out with it again. And as I do that, I'm going to lower her back onto my leg, like so. Now, it's important when you do this that you make sure that the lady's legs are behind yours. That positioning is really important. If the lady's feet aren't in the right position relative to the man's, then when she goes down, her body's going to be twisted. I'm going to turn her body slightly and lower her onto my thigh. It's important at this point that her body isn't twisted. Ladies, when you're doing this, if you feel your body being twisted around the man's or bent in any way, let him know. The lady can style this move as many drops in many ways. The way that Karen's doing it at the moment is that as I take her down, she's taking all her weight on her right leg and she's letting her left knee come up and her head go forwards and back. An alternative is for her just to lie down as we did in the left leg seducer, making a plank and giving a straight line like this. You can choose which one you wish to do. <laughs> You can 
can get into a lambada from lots of different positions. I'm going to do it from a cross hand hold. So I'm starting right to right, I'm going to step back offering my left, and then I'm going to step in doing a hallelujah. I'm going to leave my left hand high and take a ballroom grip palm to palm with my partner. I'm going to let my right hand go round her back to support her. I'm now going to step out to my left slightly to give myself a good platform. My right foot should be between hers. And then I'm going to squat in the normal way for a drop and the lady is going to go down into a lambada position. Then I bring her up again and we stop. Now, what the lady's doing is going up on her toes, thrusting her knees forward to counterbalance and sinking. Her centre of gravity is going straight down. Just watch that as she goes down, her knees go forward and her head goes back. To make it look good, you do this sort of body ripple effect where the body goes down slowly and the head goes down last and then you ripple back up again with the head coming up last. If you're doing that kind of movement, you can make even a small lambada look quite good. So you can go down a little bit and come back up again and by rippling the head, you can make it look good. It's very important that the man doesn't go up on his toes. Keep your feet flat to give the lady a good platform. The man has to go down slightly ahead of the lady because she's actually sitting on his knee. She needs to be close to his body. The closer you are, the deeper you can get it. Also, he needs to have his hands at the right position. If your hands are up here, then she can't go down very far. If your hands are supporting her around the waist, then she can go all the way. The lady can style her hands in different ways. She can have the hands out, she can sweep them, all sorts of things. If you do keep this hand connected, make sure that you keep it directly above the lady's shoulder at all times. As she's going down, you keep it high and above the shoulder so she's got a little bit of support and use the other hand to support her around the waist. When you're doing this lambada, ladies, as we showed, you can get quite a good effect just by rippling your head backwards and forwards. If you've got a bad back, don't overstress it. Practice this and see how far you can get with a man that's leading you well and giving you lots of scope. If you want to do a deep lambada, the man really has to squat right down. Now, there's two basic lambadas that people do. And one is one we've been doing where the lady goes down straight. And the other is where the man takes the lady into a sweep. To do that, you start by turning to the left and then you lower the lady, sweep her around and bring her back up again. It's important to understand that for the lady, these two moves are identical. It's the man that decides which one it is and it's the man that leads the sweep. So ladies, you're just going to go back and up. When you're doing that sweep, the sweep comes from all the connected parts, the hand behind the lady's back, the hand holding on, and also from the knees. So I'm pointing my knees to the left and I'm sweeping around using my knees to drive her round to the right. Then I bring her back up again. I hope you've enjoyed this DVD. The key message is that you should be working as a team with your partner so that you can enjoy yourselves and end up dancing rather than wrestling. Go for clarity, not strength. Use a light, responsive connection with flexible arms. Now, part of working together is respecting each other. This starts with presentation. I'll always remember one teacher finishing the lesson by taking a can of deodorant and saying, now this is a deodorant, and this is how you use it. She was addressing the men, but it's a good lesson for all of us. Wet, sweaty bodies don't make for great social dancing. Respect also includes not being overly familiar with other people. You can gently invite your partner to come closer if a move requires it, but please don't force them into a close position. Rubbing your body against a stranger is not usually appreciated, so please don't do close moves unless you've achieved some rapport. Eye contact is also very important. Uh, no, her eyes are higher up. But staring can be disconcerting. But so is looking everywhere except at your partner. Dancing is much more pleasant experience when you maintain good eye contact and smile at each other. 
You're supposed to be doing something pleasurable together. Make sure your partner knows you're enjoying it. I'm always learning new things. Better technique, better style, new moves. We should never stop learning. Always try to be able to discuss what is happening with your partner, without taking offence and without assuming that you know everything. If you want to tell someone something that you think would help them, then try to be charming as you explain it and make sure that you can justify it. And if someone tries to tell you something, please try to listen to it with an open mind. They're trying to help you. They may not always be right, but you should at least consider what they are saying. If someone does take your advice, then make sure you compliment them. Here are some useful things to remember. First of all, it's a partner dance. Make sure that you're dancing with your partner and not just for yourself. Remember, we were all beginners once. This is an important one. It's always the man's fault. But there are no mistakes, only interesting new variations. So smile and keep dancing. Have fun. The octopus starts left to right, and as I step back, I offer my other hand so we get a two-hand hold. I'm then going to raise my left hand as I bring the lady towards me, and I step behind her so that we end up facing the same direction. I'm now going to let go with my right hand and let it slide round her waist as we both step through to the other person's starting position. As I do that, I'm going to let my hand slide along her arm so that I can easily take her hand again. For the second part of the move, the man goes in front. So this time I'm going to raise my right hand, making a loop and stepping through it as I draw the lady behind me. Again, we both end up facing the same direction. This time, as I let go of the lady's hand, she's going to slide her hand along my back. She's not going to try and take my hand, but as we step back, she's going to let me find it so that I can slip into it easily. Don't worry if your hands are upside down at this stage. They'll sort themselves out when you do the next part. The third part is just like the first part. The man leads the lady in front of him, raising his left hand, and then sliding through, letting go with the right and retaking. There are two major variations of this move, one where the man leads the lady in front first, and one where he leads himself in front first. So you can dance it either like this, where the lady's going in front, or you can dance it like this, where the man goes in front first. In that circumstance, if your hands end up upside down, don't worry, as you step in for a return, they'll sort themselves out. The first move starts left to right. We step back, we step in side by side. At this point, all four feet should be in a straight line, and my left hand is up at my left shoulder. From there, I lower my hand to turn the lady out. Now at this point, we should be in a nice symmetrical position with the hands relaxed between us and our outside feet, the lady's right, my left, behind us. From there, I'm going to lead the lady back in with my left hand and then I'm going to turn her gently on the spot. She's going to step back and then we do a return. I raise the hand over the head and she steps back. This position, where all four feet are in a row, occurs in lots of modern jive moves. The basket, the sway, the secret move, the yo-yo. So the lady needs to get used to being in line and then turning out, putting her foot behind her. In the first move, She's facing the opposite direction to the man, so she's turning like that. In a move like a basket, she's stepped in and turned so she's facing the man, but she's still putting that foot behind her. It's the same foot every time. Always get to that position where the four feet are in a line. Don't anticipate by putting the foot behind you. Don't turn too soon. And then you can step out nicely like that. 
Ladies, you have a couple of choices as to what you do with your hand. You can either put it on the man's shoulder so that as he turns you out it stays relaxed lightly on his shoulder so whichever variation he chooses next you can slide easily into it or you can style it so that your hand stays out and as he turns it stays out behind you. That's fine. Make sure that whichever one you choose you're ready for any variation that comes up next. There are two variations for the man's footwork from this point. In some clubs the man is taught to step forward again as he brings the lady in front of him. In other clubs, the man is taught to get his weight on the back foot and to step back with his right foot as he brings the lady in front. This gives the lady a little bit more room. Uh, both moves are very useful in different types of variation. Practice them both and see which one works for you.